right, so we're at the Geek Media Expo. I'm about to talk to the guys in charge of Shadow of the Demon Lord. Uh, here's a nice little poster of their art right here. And on the back, interestingly enough, and this will come important later, is a copy of their proposed character sheet. Very grim and simple. Let's see what they have to say about it. I'm uh, here with the guys promoting Shadow of the Demon Lord. Uh, would you mind introducing yourself? Yeah, I'm Dan Heinrich uh, out of Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and work with Rob uh, since he's been starting around this project. And that's uh, Rob who? Robert Schwab um, has worked on 5th edition D&D, 4th edition D&D, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, pretty much anything that's got a dark aspect to it in the gaming industry. Nice, that's some uh, pretty impressive credentials. Over 10 years working on it, so. Nice, so uh, tell us a little bit about this game right here. Um, it's a dark fantasy role-playing game uh, with a lot of horror, um, really pushing it over the top to separate it from some other things. Um, designed to be easy to jump into, step in and play a quick one-night game or run campaign for as long as you might want to go. Now, I saw a little bit about the character creation process. It seems pretty simple. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, it's um, four basic attributes. Um, very simple to set up. You're only adjusting the numbers up and down slightly. There's not a lot of die rolling to determine those. Um, it keeps the game running on a fairly, uh, a fairly low power grade uh, to begin with. Um, but as you gain more talents and more traits, as you increase your level, you get to do more fun and crazy stuff. Um, the character is really that. You have four, those four attributes. So they determine you know, health and sanity and uh, things to that effect. Uh, try and keep yourself from going crazy, keep yourself from dying. So it's sanity is a stat in the game? Yes. Uh, it's actually, insanity is something you gain sort of like damage. You would gain mental damage, which would be insanity, or physical damage, which is damage. And when either of those exceed a particular stat on your sheet, something bad happens. Death, craziness, that kind of thing. Okay, so it's uh, not terribly unlike any, some of the Cthulhu games. Similar to that effect. Yeah, it's got that aspect. It's one of Rob's favorite games, and so he definitely has pulled some of that into it. So. Okay, that sounds fantastic. Now, it's uh, a game as simple as the ones that you're describing here. Are you afraid you lose anything in the complexity? Um, we're not. We've got, um, as you're going up in your tiers, we've counted up. I think last time we did a count, there were three million possibilities of characters you could play. And so it's plenty of complexity for who, however you want to do it. It doesn't have... Um, you know, 40,000 pages worth of charts to roll on, but it's um, there. every single thing has a good option, and when you make one choice, it determines what you do for the next level or two, and you make another choice, and that determines you just kind of keep building from there. And you said there were four stats. What are those four stats? Um, you have strength, just like you would think it is, but it also includes your um, kind of physical toughness, uh, like some constitutions might be in some games, or our body score might be. Uh, you have agility, which is your quickness and speed, um, you have intellect, which is more your uh, book smarts and knowledge, and then you have willpower, which is uh, more your inner strength, and that's actually the stat that you bounce against your insanity. So when insanity reaches your willpower, that's a good key for you to start going crazy. That sounds fantastic. Now, someone mentioned to me earlier the characters start at zero level. You do. Uh, zero. No, go ahead. What do you do at zero level? You are your ancestry, so you are an elf or a Nephilim or a... Um, an orc, a goblin, and that's all you are. You haven't yet gotten far enough along in your career to consider yourself a warrior, a rogue, or a mage, that kind of thing. Um, and so you are just that. You are a basic Joe, and you are something happens to push you over the edge and into the life of adventure or um, revenge. It just depends how you know how you're going to run that game. So this is a horror fantasy game, you said? It is. It is. Yeah. Okay. Are there uh, any parts of any other genres that make an appearance? Anything steampunk? Anything modern-y? You, you definitely have got some steampunk in there. You've got, um, there's a there's a definite technology angle in it. Um, clockwork beasts exist. You know, automatons, um, black powder is there. You've got um, blunderbusses, for lack of a better term, some pistols. There's actually a tradition of magic that is uh, technomancy, which will allow people to take a bag of bits and parts and create a, you know, rapidly create a crossbow turret that'll fire each round during combat. Um, and they can also go through and uh, you've got uh, alchemists that can go through and make not just a, a potion of healing, but they can make poisons and acids and things to that effect. And so all of that really works into it. That sounds like a whole lot of fun. Is there uh, anything else you'd like to add? Uh, just fear the shadow. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much so for taking fun. the time to speak with me.